Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and I have the birthday card that I made for Gavin. <laughs> you can hear in the background. He's playing behind me in his little play area while I do the voiceover for this video. So I took a leap. i am obviously been obsessed with watercolor the last few weeks, whatever. And now I'm kind of into the no line watercolor attempts. And I took a leap. I went from doing, you know, a couple of cards, one of which I've posted, the other hasn't, to doing an entire scene, which I don't overly recommend, but hey, whatever floats your boat, honestly. Um, I wanted to make him a dinosaur themed card and I pulled out the only dinosaur stamp set I own <laughs> and it's the Paper Smooches Cutosaurus stamp set. So I am stamping these images with Distress Pumice Stone ink and I stamped them off several times on scratch paper first because I wanted a very light impression so I could see where I was coloring and yet it's the lines are not going to show up. So I used balloons from the Paper Smooches Hullabaloo stamp set as well. And I had stamped the little Tyrannosaurus Rex image and I had masked him off and stamped a couple of the stone stamps from that same set. And then I'd done the same with the balloons. Stamped a balloon, masked it off, and stamped the other balloons. And then I'm going in and watercoloring. And I'm using my Mission Gold watercolors, which I've done a review on and I've shown a few times in videos now. And I'm going to start off a little slow and then now I'm going to just super speed this up. This all together took well over an hour to do all the coloring. Um, I did it in several sittings. I would just work on it when I had time, um, set it aside because I wasn't happy with it, come back to it. You know, it just, it was kind of a two or three day process just to play around with it and figure out what I was doing because I've never done an actual like image other than a floral image and then um, a much simpler one with no lines. So I do know um, it always looks kind of like crap in the beginning because you don't have that definition. Like it, with this little guy, you can see like his eyes and his teeth aren't done. Um, he just kind of looks weird, but I kept working at it. Um, I would do a layer of color and then let it dry and add another layer of color. And then I mixed a little bit of brown and did, you know, that sort of thing. And then I went on and did the stones and I kind of did the same thing. I would do just one little area at a time, let them dry and then go on to something else. And for his teeth, I decided I didn't want to leave them just plain because that would look really, really boring. So I did um, several layers of kind of like grays and then a little bit of yellow and that sort of thing. Cause I'm like, he's a dinosaur. They don't really have like, technically don't have pearly whites or they wouldn't have, I don't know. Um, so again, lots of color layering here. Also just experimenting a bit with, the watercolors which yeah I kind of had fun with it um I know I kind of go a little all out for my kids birthday cards I've had people like comment on that not in a negative way but just like oh I never did you know beautiful cards or you know in-depth cards for my kids first and second birthdays I do it because I love it and yeah he's not even going to be able to tell maybe in 20 years <laughs> if the card is still you know in storage somewhere um he'll appreciate it but I just I was just having fun with it um yeah, I do that with all my kids' birthday cards. For me, it's just an ex a time for me to just really sit down and play. So that is what I did. And at, with all watercoloring and especially like the no line, you definitely need to work in little sections and you have to let each area dry before you go on to the next one. Otherwise, they're going to bleed into each other and you want that definition around the edges. So that's what I did. I just did everything in little layers and would go back and forth between different areas and had to let everything fully dry. And that's something that I still work on that patience. And I'm sorry, my head keeps getting in the way here because I had the camera on, but I don't, I don't always pay attention to like wh the fact that I'm filming and, you know, I'm leaning over and trying to look straight down sometimes. And my hair was piled on top of my head too. So my big old messy ponytail on top of my head, you know, all the hairs poke out into the frame. So I apologize for that. And yeah, I just kept fiddling with this. And my biggest thing too was to like to actually create a scene. And um, yeah, I just kept working. Um, the eye as well, like trying to add a little bit of definition. I added a teeny, teeny bit of watered down blue and a little bit of watered down gray to give it that little bit of definition. And then for the ground, I had laid down just kind of a base color of a, I think it was like sepia brown. And then um, added a second layer to give it a little bit more um, depth and dimension. Because that's what you can see here. If I'd just done like one layer of every single image, like the balloons here, it just, there's not, there's, there's no depth. There's no depth. There's no dimension. There, it's just colored in. 
which works with some things. But with this, I was like, this doesn't look very good at all. <laughs> so I would go back and add, you know, another layer of color. I think the balloons, I ended up doing three layers of color. And the dinosaur, I don't even, I lost count of how many um, layers of color I added. And then I went back in and just added little bits of detail around his mouth and his eye. And then at the end, I'll go in and add little like dots and stuff too. So between each um, layer, um, as I let things dry, I would go back in and add a different layer of color to one of the balloons, etc. And then for the background, I painstakingly went around and added um, a very watered down blue mixture. <laughs> Gavin's just having a ball behind me. Um, <laughs> this part, I, after I had already really got about halfway through the painting, I realized I should have done this like first added some background color because it was a major pain adding that blue and not um, smearing the colors but it worked and then I took my finest uh, watercolor brush this is a size 2 brush and just some black watercolor and I freehand drew in the balloon strings just yeah just winged it I was a little bit nervous to do it but I was like well it needs, they can't just be floating there you know in perfect harmony so <laughs> it watered colored in those balloon strings honestly you could totally just take it like a black marker and do something but I was just in the zone and then yeah like I'd mentioned earlier I took some different colors and added little speckles to the dinosaur <laughs> uh, and then finally added a last layer of color to the balloons to just give them um, a little bit more dimension and then added a little bit more to his teeth. And once I was done with that, and it was completely dry, I can peel off all the tape, which I wasn't worried about at all because at the beginning I had traced the dye I was planning on using onto here just to give me an idea of where um, I could fit all the images. And this is one of the, the largest dye from the inside and out stitched rectangle, rounded rectangle stacks dyes, say that three times fast, <laughs> from my favorite things. And so I taped the dye in place with some micro micropore tape so I could trim it out now perfectly. And then um, for the sentiment, I am using the paper smooches. This is the Alpha Dot stamp set. And I made my own sentiment. I spelled out Gavin's name. That is something I love doing with all my kids' birthday cards is customizing it to them and putting the names either die cut or stamps or whatever. So for this, I decided to go with stamps. And I moved it around to fit where I wanted it. So I put Gavin is. I was going to say like, happy birthday, Gavin, or it's Gavin's birthday. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it and finally decided to just, you know, point out the obvious and put Gavin is one. <laughs> so I coated that corner with anti-static powder and then stamped the letters with Versamark ink, so clear sticky ink, and then used WOW's Primary Ebony um, Detail Black Embossing Powder. So used that and heat that with my heat tool until it was melted. I had thought about stamping it, just stamping it in black, but I wanted um, the embossed look to it, so I used the black embossing powder. And then that number one is from another Paper Smooches die set from their Numbers die set. And I die cut it from white cardstock. And then did my other little trick to put it back into the scrap I die cut it from. So that I could sponge some um, Distress ink over it. And I was using Spiced Marmalade ink. And then I just sponged it from the bottom towards the top. I wanted kind of an ombre look just to have it stand out a little bit more. And figured out where I was going to place that and then decided to create a stamped background. So I pulled out my my favorite things. This is the Myriad Dot background stamp. And I inked it up with Jelly Bean Green ink from MFT. And I stamped it onto the same color of cardstock. So Jelly Bean Green cardstock. I always just put the paper on onto the background stamp. And then I used a scratch piece of paper to keep the ink from getting on my hands. And then I die cut that with the largest die from the Blueprints One Dynamic Set, also from MFT. So you can see it just kind of frames my watercolor piece here. And then I popped up that little number one with some 3D foam squares. So pop that into place and then I decided to attach the main die cut panel that I had watercolored with some foam tape. So that was popped up as well and I just attached that to the background that I had stamped. And then I set that aside and grabbed my card base, which is just some heavyweight white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by um, five and a half inches or well, four and a quarter by 11 and scored at five and a half. So it's a standard A2 size card. 
and Gavin's sitting in my lap, so now he's making his little random noises. Uh, the happy birthday's from the Hullabaloo set, and I stamped that with intense black ink. And then there's a little dinosaur paw print set in the Paper Smooches Cutosaurus set, so I used that same jelly bean green ink and just stamped it multiple times to look like, you know, a dinosaur walked across the inside of the card. And then I attached the main card front to the card base itself and that finished it off. So I will post a link below the video to my blog post and links to all the supplies used. Thank you all so very much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping my videos and I will see you guys in the next one. Can you say bye bye? <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye.